I'm Kaylee Morgan. I'm hanging out with Rob in Front Row Life. I've been trying to get with you since a little before your uh, LA debut in March. Wow. And you were already a busy, a busy artist. Yeah, no, that's like, that's pretty OG though, because yeah. that's, that was like forever ago, it seems yeah. like. It seems like it. It's only been like nine months and, you know, you went from that first LA show to like basically touring. How many dates did you do on this? Three weeks? Yeah, it's been about three weeks, but it was definitely a jump because before this tour, I'd only mm. done, I think like three or four shows total. Right. So a few was, festivals in, the, in <laughs> there. Yeah. yeah, it was, which are totally different than like doing these venue shows. So right. it's been a lot of just kind of like jumped into this crazy world of shows, but I definitely yeah. needed the experience. So it's been cool. Yeah. So, you know, as, as you're getting into these shows and not just the shows, but you're, you're jumping into these tours and these big festivals, like how did you get comfortable no you're good uh, how did you get comfortable like in do and you know in getting on those stages um I don't think there's anything in particular that like happened that I was like okay like this is my thing but mm. I think it's definitely just something that can't be learned like you just have to like get on stage it. and it just clicks sometimes right. like I think it definitely kind of takes over when I'm on stage like I'll feel so nervous and shaky and then yeah. I just hop on and I'm like okay like this is for the audience too like this right. isn't just for me like this is a performance and I want to entertain them so I just kind of like kind of go in my own little bubble but interact at the same time right so it's funny because it's like some of my favorite artists are like that too like there's they have like you know, they, ha they deal with anxiety or like, you know, they, they, j they just don't want to deal with so many people all at once. But it's like once they hit the stage, like they're yeah. a completely different person. No, like everything really just isn't. disappears. It's really a click. Like I don't even I can't even describe it because I, I didn't really understand that that was happening yeah. until recently because I seriously will like be so shaky and like not want to talk to anybody. <laughs> and then I get on stage and just that kind of rush of adrenaline yeah. hits you and you're just I'm just like dancing <laughs> and then I get <laughs> off and I talk to everybody. But that's like such a different interaction, too, because I definitely think people that are so interested in music yeah. are so open minded. Right. And so when I meet them, there's just like an automatic connection. And right. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> so tell me more about this tour with with Pale Waves that you've been on for the last three weeks. You know, what did you learn from touring with with this band? Oh, it's been like so many things like physically, mentally, because I I mean, I'm like away from home. Mm. I'm in a freaking van all the time, like <laughs> sleeping in the van. And um, but also like I've become such good friends with Pale Waves right. and, and this other band, The Candescence. Um, and it's just been like a lot of, I mean, it sounds so corny, but like friendship. And yeah. like, <laughs> also, because these people are going through the same thing that we are. We're doing right. the same thing every night, but it's never boring. Like, right. it's just like, oh, like, got to go meet the fans. Like, let's do it. And it's like you meet different people every night. And it's just like, I think one thing that really has stuck out to me that I've kind of realized mm -hmm. is just like, how many freaking people are like in the world like because i've been to places like these little towns that like i would never have gone to and i'm just yeah. like wow people live here like this is this freaking there's just so many people <laughs> so yeah does, does it blow your mind not only like how many people there are but it's like just the different kinds of cultures that you get to experience that you you know in california you see plenty but if you go somewhere else like indiana you don't really see much you know like so yeah, no. does that culture shock get to you it doesn't really get to me but we'll kind of I don't know. It's kind of like we do go to places where it's just like, wow, like people actually live here and there's like yeah. not really anything around because yeah. L.A. is so overwhelming and yeah. so crazy that right. you then you go to a little place like Omaha and you're like, oh, OK, it's very chill, like, <laughs> which I actually enjoy because yeah. I don't I like the quiet and stuff, but I don't I don't think I could live there. Right. But it's you know, it was actually kind of nice being in these like sleepy cities, I guess you could say. Right. <laughs> so you're I mean, this is one of the final shows for the tour. Mm -hmm. You're about to settle down, maybe settle down for for the rest of 2018 um siren was your latest single that you released like you know from releasing siren to you know to now like do you feel like your sound has kind of like evolved just because of the new experiences that you've had on this tour yeah like completely because i even after siren i went walked into all my sessions and i was like i kind of want to do like more alternative and and oh, for wow. some reason this tour has really changed my ideas on like writing mm. which i really didn't i mean i knew i was going to be like inspired i might write things on the road right but i really have like heard so much music too because like well i mean we're in the van all day so right. we'll be listening to different types of music and i'm like wow like i wouldn't really have thought to write that way so i've been really like thinking about writing and also different genres that i can kind of play with mm -hmm. and different instruments that i usually be like mm. <laughs> so it's been like really eye-opening and i'm excited because i want to kind of just do like a little bit of everything rather than being like oh everything has to sound like this right so yeah 
Now, in the past with your with your debut EP, you got to collaborate or you got you got to work with uh, Joel Little. Mm -hmm. um, he produced the EP. Mm -hmm. So you know, in in working with such an a producer like him, like first of all, how did he challenge you when you first went into the studio? Um, that was one of my first sessions, and I think with him, it was kind of one of the first times that I walked in because I before this like before I got signed and before this was all a huge thing like I really just wrote for myself and it was really just I never really wrote with other people it was very right. personal to me and I was kind of struggling with like getting to a very vulnerable place with writing and with music with well going into these sessions with okay, these people because yeah. you know it's like every day you kind of just meet somebody new or you you know you're kind of like okay well now let's write a whole song about something personal so yeah. it's like very I just have to get very vulnerable and with him like that was the first time that I was like okay I'm gonna write a song about this whole experience of just getting signed and moving away from home and kind of like the loneliness of LA and mm -hmm. stuff and like we just started going for it in a way that I was like not completely comfortable with at first because I was like like these are my feelings but like, but it was so good and yeah that we have unfortunate soul which kind of was like the first song that we did together that I was just like I'm the worst, and this is a song about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> so yeah, it was like really fun, and he definitely challenges me, like even with melodies and with just the sound of everything. He's really just a crazy producer. Right? Has, has he been the only producer that you've worked with aside from like Weathen and like uh, Queen ninety two? But they, it was like for their projects. But mm -hmm. producer wise, has has he been the only one? No, I am um, actually Medusa and Discovery, which were two other songs on the um, okay. EP. Those were done by C.J. Barron. Okay. He's incredible. Like he also is one of those people that really like, makes me step out of my um, comfort zone more with like the genre of what mm. we're making and like musically rather than lyrically. But he's an incredible writer as well. But he, uh, yeah, he's he did those two, and we have some other stuff too that's unreleased. Oh, and <laughs> and you'll <laughs> I'm performing them one of them tonight. So okay. You know. But, um, yeah, he's insane. I love him. So I work with him. And then, honestly, I'm still in that phase where I'm, like, meeting new people a lot and seeing what works for me and mm. also kind of trying to get in with new producers so that I can see, like, a different sound that will come out of it with new people. Right. So. That's far. I mean, how do you feel about co-writes? Do you feel like that's something you want to, like, work on in, you know, in your career? Is it something that you want to try not to work on? I know some artists prefer to do their own writing. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you feel about that? I don't think I'm ever going to not write a majority of a song for myself. Right. Um, obviously, I know it's like writing is such an art and people mm. that want to do it and not be an artist, like that's cool. But I just, for me, I don't, I, I just need to be writing my songs. <laughs> like I totally like co-writing and having somebody come in and like be like, oh, I like what you're doing here, but what if you made it like this? Because then I'm kind of stepping out of my comfort zone and thinking right. of things that I wouldn't have thought of before. So I think of it more as like a teamwork type thing rather than, um, not writing my songs because I just need to have a piece of me and everything, right. and because that's what that's how it started, and that's what I want to keep doing for sure. And you want your fans to feel that emotion. Yeah, because I, I feel like if I am not the one feeling it, and I do, I am very empathetic, so I can write about things I haven't gone through. Right. But it's like if I am not connecting with it, and if I didn't write some part of it, then I feel like it's not going to sound like I did, you know. Right. So. Now, Medusa was the one that the track that you know really got the attention of everybody like that track just like exploded once you released it when it exploded what did that how did that impact you uh, I don't know it's just like it was really strange like obviously it was an overwhelming feeling of just like oh I can do this yeah. like it was such um just kind of like a confidence that came over me because I was like, oh, like this isn't that far-fetched of an idea that mm. I can do this and I can be an artist. This can be my career. And at the same time, it was like so inspiring because that was such an experimental song. Like I really didn't know if I even liked it, but I was like, mm, like we'll <laughs> see. We'll see if they if people respond to it. And so it was kind of just confirming that like I can kind of step outside of my comfort zone and also just not be scared to jump into the world of music because it is like so hard to get where you need to go definitely what is what do you feel has been like your biggest challenge like ever since like the attention has been focused on you I definitely think it's been a lot of the my like anxiety issues with mm. not really like kind of struggling with being an artist and wanting people to know me and like get to know me personally and also not wanting people to know me like just like <laughs> like that's a little too personal yeah. I don't know like how public I want like my feelings to be and my experiences but you kind of have to do that as an artist and be vulnerable and um so that's definitely been and like also obviously with meeting people and working with new people on an everyday basis has been 
a little bit hard, but over time, because it's been like a year, maybe a year and a half, so it's been a lot easier now because mm -hmm. I've just kind of been like, oh, this is my job. Like, right. we're getting used to it. But at first, it was really hard, definitely. And as you're still trying to figure out like what you want to really, uh, what you want to show your fans and what you don't want to show, like at the same time, do you feel like you're still trying to to discover who you are as an artist? Oh, a hundred percent. I think I've definitely like kind of came into my own being I guess like um, um more recently like with Siren I was so like self-assured about like putting myself into that and directing mm. the music video and just right. being a bigger part of the visuals and just the whole song rather than like with Medusa I was like yeah I love this song and but I'm not sure really what I want for the music video now it's like every single time I make something I'm thinking about visual wow, visuals nice. I'm thinking about like live performances I'm really involving myself more than I would have before so yeah do you think that, you know, thinking about the visuals and what the live performance might be would be crucial to whether or not the song is actually going to make it to, you know, to to be heard? Um, I don't I don't really think so. I think like it's more crucial just how people respond to it, I guess, mm. because I I don't even really know like when I'm writing something I'm like maybe they'll like it. <laughs> like maybe they won't, but I definitely do think it does play a part because right. it's it's a lot more genuine when the artist is a part of that stuff because they're right. showing you exactly what they wanted to be, be portrayed when they wrote it. Mm. So I do think there is an impact, but people respond to music differently. Like you really never know. Right. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about this collaboration with Weathen. I know you guys wrote some like maybe three or four songs as well. Yeah. So, um, you know, what was it about this song that you wanted to release it? I don't know. I think it's just like, we were both sitting in the studio and we were kind of friends before this so it wasn't really like oh well, let's make a song like let's right. make a hit like it wasn't like just another we hangout session to do anything yeah, yeah we weren't trying to do anything at all um but it was just it came so quickly to me and sometimes i feel like when lyrics come fast to you and you're just like thinking about it and you're like oh like this sounds really good sometimes right. those are the best songs because it's just clicking so well that mm. it makes sense and um that's kind of what happened and we did write a few other songs but that one like right off the bat there was something about it that it was just stuck in all of our heads after yeah. that and um it was definitely just like you heard it we heard it i showed it to my manager and we we're just like oh my god this is it. Like, let's let's come out with this one. <laughs> so we just knew it was yeah. like such a good song, honestly. <laughs> now, how do you feel about you know collaborating with electronic artists like like him and Quinn? Like, because um, I you know that's how I've been discovering a lot of new singers lately. It's what either Spotify or like an electronic artist is like featuring someone. Mm -hmm. But how do you like doing those those kind of features? I think that it's super interesting because for me, especially when it's coming out under their name, like featuring mm. me or whatever, like with a, with different artists, it's kind of like it's it might not be something that I would personally come out with right. or that um, I would personally want like on my album or anything because it's so different. Mm. But I get the opportunity to jump into that world and be like, oh, like this is really different from what I usually do. So right. I really get to kind of expand like what I'm doing and think differently. And it's really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Does that impact you at all? Like whether like maybe influence you in any way when, when you go back to your music? Uh, yeah, definitely. Because I, I mean, when I'm doing new things, I always like kind of take something with me, as mm. corny as that sounds. But it's <laughs> like, I mean, because everything you do with music, you're just like, oh, like this is something I really never would have thought of. Right. And now I'm like going to, with Do You Feel This Way, definitely. I was just like, oh, this, it was very cool sounding to mm. me. And so like I kind of took some of those elements and like the cool base of it and stuff and put it into some other songs with siren like siren has a really nice bass and that's kind of what i've been like loving lately because of that thing? song yeah is that what you listen to when you when you listen to new music that's what you pay for, uh, attention to um it really depends because i i do like the bass lot there's something about bass lines that i've just been like because I, I listen to a lot of like classic rock and like yeah, alternative nice. so when i hear a nice bass line or something that like when the bass is really the center of attention because it's usually not mm. i'm just like ooh, like, <laughs> like that's very different cool. um but i've been really digging just more like guitar basic live instrument stuff right. so i've been paying attention to that a lot lately for some reason <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you what what can fans expect for 2019 2019 i'm like i'm so excited i, I seriously <laughs> can't because i have like some cool ass collaborations oh that are coming and i'm like gosh. i haven't yeah i haven't really collaborated thanks for the tease by the way <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I collabed with um, Quinn. Yeah, but I haven't um, really gotten any like collaborations with girls yet. So you'll, you know, I'm getting really excited. And then um, might she be in the other room? 
Uh, well, no, but that <laughs> we're really close to that we could probably make that happen. <laughs> and then um, I have um, more shows coming up, but there's just going to be a lot of new music because yeah. I feel like this year was kind of like teasing with the EP and right. then a couple singles here and there. And even then, I still felt like you released a lot of music yeah, no, this year. It's definitely like just a lot of different sounds, but there's going to be more solid like projects and more okay. of a, I guess like there's going to be a certain direction that it's going in rather than kind of like throwing out a single here or there. It's going right. to be very like a collective piece of artwork. Okay. So I'm super stoked and to do more shows is going to be just fun as always because I'm right. getting so excited about performing now. Right. So what, what do we have to do or the fans have to do in order to get you to go on tour with Billie Eilish? Oh my god! Okay, it's actually funny because I was um um my, our managers were like talking about it really, what? but yeah. But the problem was uh, I guess she was looking for more of like um a hip hop artist because she's so okay. into all that right. stuff. But maybe eventually because I know like our fans, our fan base are very similar, right. and I feel like a lot of people that listen to her listen like to me, and people that listen to me yeah. listen to her. Or so. even a collaboration like that, Danny, you got to get on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean I've worked with Phineas too, her brother. Yeah. So I mean we're like this close. So it's like oh gosh. it could it could happen, but you know. That I mean maybe. that would be ideal. I know, that would be insane. She's very talented. That would be ideal. All right, so for those that are not familiar with you, why do you create music? That'll be your last question, I swear. This is like I, this is such <laughs> a heavy question always. Um I create I've, I've always created music for myself and for mm. my, I mean, I do it for other people too and to connect, but like, it's very much a coping mechanism for me. And right. it's like, if I can make somebody else feel like, oh, that's so corny. But if I can make somebody <laughs> else feel like, oh, this shit, like this person is feeling the same way as yeah. me and I cannot put it into words, but they just did. Or like, I cannot put this feeling into words, but they made me feel it. That's what I want to do. I want to make people feel kind of relief, whether it's like they don't have to be happy all the time while listening right. to my music. I have some sad songs. <laughs> <laughs> like That's kind of my goal. I just want people to be like, oh, I can't put this into words, but I can feel it with this song. And I, I love that. So that's why I make music. Awesome. Well, thanks again for hanging out with me. You guys, be sure to check out Kaylee Morg. Uh, latest single is Siren. Uh, debut EP Medusa is out as well. And um, yeah, thanks for watching our front row live. Thank you.